Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about Phil Towns' stock portfolio. We just got the filings that Phil Towns Fund made for the third quarter, which shows all the stocks he's bought and sold, as well as his options positions. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what Phil Town did in the third quarter, what stocks he bought, what stocks he sold, and what I think is most important, his options portfolio, which I think gives great insight into what he thinks certain companies are worth. Now, if you get some value out of today's video, make sure you leave a like on this video. Hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the content I post in the future. And you can also let me know your thoughts on Phil Town's portfolio down in the comments. So let's get started. All right, so here is Rule One Funds updated investments in the third quarter. Um, this is from the SEC website. And here we can see all the positions that Phil Town owns um, in his portfolio. Now, now, I don't really like this layout. Um, it doesn't make things neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something I found online um, where someone has compiled a list of Phil Town's stock market positions and what has changed from quarter to quarter. So here's an image I found, and this is a much better view of the changes that Phil Town has made. Uh, this goes in order from largest position to smallest. Um, so starting at the top, his largest position is still Bank OZK. Um, again, that is also one of my largest positions in the stock market. And I always think this is pretty cool um, because I have owned Bank OZK since before Phil Town's fund even started uh, filing reports. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, that we share the stock in common. Uh, he also owns CF Industries, which he which he sold out 25% on his position. No change on Huntington Ingalls. Um, now a big ad on Alibaba. He increased his holding by 67%. Um, that makes it around 6.4% of the portfolio. Obviously, no surprise here. Phil Town likes to copy uh, well-known investors, and a lot of them have gotten into Alibaba in the past couple of quarters. So um, no surprise there. Now going down the list, we have Sprouts Farmers Market added 26% to his position. That makes up around 6% of the portfolio. Now, Sprouts Farmers Market is actually a stock that is on my watch list. I made a video on my watch list. I think it was at the beginning of this year. So I'll put a, so I'll put a card up to that now if you wanna see the stocks that are on my watch list and my thoughts on Sprouts Farmers Market. Now, I didn't end up buying in because the stock didn't get as low as I wanted, but it is still a company I'm watching. And if the, and if the price does fall in the future, they are one I will definitely take a hard look at. Um, so if we keep going down, Another interesting thing is Phil Town owns gold, a 4% allocation to gold. And if we come down here, uh, Phil Town did add a lot more silver, um, the iShares Silver Trust, which is 2.1% of the portfolio. I think Phil Town has said that he views gold and silver just as sort of cash alternatives, assets that won't lose their value as the dollar ultimately becomes less and less valuable. Um, I think this is a pretty smart thing to do. I think everyone understands that um, you know over periods of five, 10 years, the dollar is going to lose value. And so I think if you're holding a lot of cash, it does make sense to uh, sort of diversify out of US dollars for your cash position. Now, speaking of cash, cash is actually the largest position in Phil Town's portfolio. If we can come down here, he's a 34% allocation to cash. This has been a constant since he started filing um, on the holdings of his fund. He has, over the past year, he has held a large position on cash. Um, again, he says this is because he thinks the market is uh, quite overvalued, which I do tend to agree with. Now, a big reduction on uh, Boeing stock. I think Phil Town said in a recent um, video that he made that he can that he completely sold out of Boeing because he didn't like management's um, because he didn't like what management was doing um, with the debt load and the direction they were taking the company. Now I made a video on my thoughts on Boeing probably over a year ago at this point, and I had the same critiques. Even though Boeing looked cheap back in March, April of 2020, I just didn't like the management and they had a lot of debt and they had too much debt. Uh, for me to feel comfortable with. So that's why I pass on Boeing. It seems like Filtown has some similar thoughts there. Filtown also sold out completely uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Guild and Activewear, Alta Beauty, and Sanderson's Farms. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, I don't think, was a huge position to begin with. So he probably just wanted the cash to put into another opportunity, probably Alibaba, seeing that how that is uh, what he added most to. Now, what we are going to go back to the SEC filing for is to see his options positions. Like I said, this is extremely valuable because it tells us not only what stocks he's interested in buying, but also the exact price at which he would like to buy them. So you can be pretty sure that at these prices, Phil Town thinks these stocks are undervalued. And so again, Phil Town is mainly a seller of options, same as um, a lot of value investors, such as Warren, Warren Buffett has employed this strategy a lot, where you're basically acting as the insurance company, you take in a premium, 
for the obligation to buy shares at a certain price. Now, Filtown has also purchased put options and sold put options. So what it looks like he's doing is an op some option spreads. Um, simply put, that lets you collect premium while limiting your downside. I made a couple of videos on the strategy. I'll put a card up to one example if you want to learn more about that. So Filtown bought put options on Alibaba and the S&P 500. Both of these have expired already. And from the strike prices, it looks like they expired out of the money. So Filtown did probably pocket some nice premium on these spreads. And so if we come down to the put options that he sold, he also sold put options on Alibaba and the S&P 500. So these are the exercise prices, $105 for Alibaba, um, $37.50 for the S&P 500. And, and according to these put options, Phil Town would buy more Alibaba at $105. That is where he feels confident um, that there is a large enough margin of safety to justify increasing the position. Now, Phil Town has also sold some call options on these following companies. And at these exercise prices is where where he's basically agreeing to sell his shares at these prices. So if you're interested in any of these companies, uh, these exercise prices are probably prices where he would feel comfortable selling these, these, these stocks. So that is an update on Phil Town's portfolio. Let me know down in the comments if any of these moves surprised you. So that's it for now. Hope everyone has a great day and I will see you on the next video.